Welcome to the Boom Bap Kingdom. Yo, peace and welcome to the Boom Bap Kingdom. Today I just wanted to jump back on the S2400. Just wanted to do some raw 12 bit gritty one shots. Sometimes when I'm not, when I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, sometimes when I'm feeling a little lazy, I just chop up some one shots. I might feel a little lazy, but I still wanna work. You know what I mean? So I might chop up some one shots. But let's just talk about that for one quick second. Then, we're going to go to the, the samples and stuff. The idea behind one shots, if you really think about golden era boom bap, if you listen to the Sonics, there was a, a shift in the style of production. In the very beginning, everybody was using loops, right? And you got to ask yourself, Yo, why, why were they doing that? They were doing that because they were emulating the turntable. So when the sampler came out, unfortunately eliminated the need for a DJ. So if you were an MC or if you were a guy who was getting into making beats early, so maybe you had an MPC 60 or you had a 1200. If you're a guy who's kind of like by themselves or maybe you were a crew like Mob Deep, no DJ, etc., you were in there and you were digging in the crates for dope loops. So when you when you do the knowledge, you see how this all progresses. It all progresses from a sampler that can loop. When you're on two turntables back in the day, you were literally looping the break. You were going, you know, bring that record back, back, back. You see what I'm saying? So initially, a sampler was a looper. When you think about it, a sampler was the replacement for the DJ. Hence those long, you know, just kind of drawn out loops. And then over time, producers got a little bit more musical. When you listen to stuff like uh, Jungle Brothers' uh, first album, great example. Ultra Magnetic first album, another good example where you start, you see how the, the DJ kind of integrated a little bit with the sampler, but then over time you listen to Ultra Mag and and you see where they were just really chopping samples on an SP12. And then time kind of goes forward from there. You get the tribe call quest and you you know you're still hearing the loops and stuff. But then you get into gang stars like second, third album. Now you're hearing the chops. The chops and the one shots. And the science behind that was if you were using little chops from here, there, and everywhere, it's easier to sneak that past sample clearance, right? These little, you know, and you're putting that in different, how, how do you clear that? You know what I mean? How, how do you quantify where that came from if you're digging in the crates? Because that was the science. I got to find a loop that no one has heard before put some drums over it, make a beat, put, put, you know, rhyme on it, put the song out. That's what was happening in the early days. But then that sample clearance came in, you know, biz got beaten ahead. The there was an old electronic store back in the days in New York called the Wiz. And biz Markey did nobody beats the biz. That was a play or for the jingle in the commercial, nobody beats the whiz. So he took that, ran with it, made a beat. He got sued for that, right? And then you had De La Soul uh, with the transmitting live from Mars on Three Feet High and Rising, made by a group called the Turtles, and they got sued. And they didn't even rhyme on that. It was just a loop and a skit. That's all it was. They still got sued and Tommy Boy had to pay out. I know I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent, but this whole concept of sampling really was a slick way to replace a DJ and then to kind of multi-track a beat 
and then over time instead of using loops morphed into one shots because one shots were easier to not have to clear that was really the science so i kind of wanted to give you guys a, a little background and today i'm chopping up stuff on the 2400 and it's all one shots you know i got drums in here i got a bunch of samples in here i don't know what i'm going to be able to do with them we're going to find out <laughs> together you and i bang let's get on this uh 2400 and let's see what we got nothing is pitched my drums are pitched and i'll let you in on a little secret uh on the 2400 you can change the bit depth so even though i'm in classic mode i dropped the bit rate down to eight bits for uh, the kicks and snares just to make them a little bit more gritty we have eight one shots we have five drum samples and i have a bass line that i put into four different tracks that i'm just going to chop some notes out and uh you know do some pitching and and come up with a, a bass line so we got That's what we got. I don't know if I'm gonna use all that stuff, <laughs> but that's what we have. So I have two kicks, snare, two hats. And because this is the Boom Bap Kingdom, already have a drum loop, and you like to hear it? Well, here it go. Boom Bap Kingdom says, it's time uh, for some drums. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. Let's find a pitch for a sample here and try to cook some up. The Boomer Kingdom says, let's pitch these fucking samples. I like that pitch right there. I might copy that one out to a couple other tracks, but let's see. Like that, we're gonna lay that down. Mm. We're getting somewhere. Now, obviously I have more samples, I can create more patterns, and then I can do alterations, make changes, and, and this, that, the third. So what I'm going to do right now is move on to the baseline. All right? Let's go. The Boom Bad Kingdom says, let's chop up some sh All right. So we're going to just chop up the transients in this uh, baseline. And then we'll put that each one, you know, each chop on tracks, we'll pitch it, and then we'll start playing. As you can see, sample, sample editing 
is what takes the longest amount of time if you take your time because this is where the arc begins it's all in how you chop your stuff up how you pitch it and how you play it back Line, son. Oh, hold up. The horn is ring ringing. Let's see who got who, who that. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. It's the guard. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You on camera, guard. You heard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. The guard, we got the guard seventh touch with us and. And this Mike is Chen, my Chen. man. My man is is uh got a dope thing going on. The Abstract Rhythm Cafe is also launching a dope game company, Elgo Games. Just be on the lookout for all that. This is my best friend, my brother, my man, my main. Come on, my A alike. Right, okay. Support the yeah, God. Sir, Word is yes, bond. Sir. You heard? Like support what he's yes, doing. Sir. He's trying to build. So let's, let's let's help him build. What up, God? What's good? Yeah. Hey man, listen, me and me and me and this uh, 2400 is locked in Mortal Kombat, bro. Bunch of just chopping up one shots and going in. Yeah, uh, yeah you'll see how how I chopped up the baseline and how I pitched it and how I how I made that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna throw that in. Uh, I've I've been doing that quite a bit. <laughs> I ain't been slapping them dumb hard, but I'm definitely resetting them for sure. The machine is very, very tactile, and I think that's what separates it from a lot of other machines. You know, yeah. is and I, I feel the same way about the Octatrack. You know, the Octatrack is very tactile. You know, when you hit it, it's it's really industrial. Well, you can tell that you know Electron in their mind they're building this to last through World War Forty One. Listen, there's there's dudes dudes are gonna be in the doomsday bunker with the with yeah. the with the with the Octatrax. They'll be in the doomsday when the zombie apocalypse hits. They'll still be in the bunker making beats, you know, you know on the on, on the electron. You could pop out the bunker and bash a zombie in the wig piece with with a with an Octatrack. You know what I mean? Do that with a new NPC and the zombie might laugh at you. You heard? Yeah, he's like, hey, hey, but if you catch him. What? Like, what? He bend his wig back. Bang. <laughs> well, yo, I'm going to finish this up because I'm literally okay, almost no done. Okay, no doubt. All right, God. Huh? All right, peace. All right, I don't know if I can make this work, but I'm going to try. Let's see what we can do. We did it. Let's go back. Bank A. We started out with a bunch of unpitched chops from all over the place. Some of them were gated, some of them weren't. Bank B, we chopped up our drums, right? And bank C, chopped up a bass, a bunch of bass shots. Pitched them, we pitched everything, got it right, made a loop, already had the drum loop, made the one shot loop, went back, made the bass line, made a bunch of patterns, some changes, and we added the hook. So we got a joint from Soup to Nuts, and we were able to speak to the guard, Seventh Touch Abstract Rhythm Cafe, he called in too. So that was dope, right? So all in all, a really cool day at the Boom Bap Kingdom. Yo, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Listen, we're here, right? 
Boom Bap Kingdom. We're here. Check me out on the boombapkingdom.com. You could cop shirts. You can cop hats. We got all that. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you can get the sample packs. Those are there. The blunted drums, the Boom Bap Kingdom Volume 1 drums, and the hidden secrets. Because you know how we get down here. We try to drop the jewels and give you guys all the hidden secrets about this boom bap thing, this beat making thing. And we just come and just try to have a good time, man. So I thank you guys for rocking with us. Like, share, subscribe. And I'm going to do what I always do. And that's leave you with the finished joint. And a BBK salute. salute. Peace.